Hi, everyone. Welcome to Google Developer Space channel, and thank you for joining us today. We are super excited to be hosting, co hosting Coding Growth along with a panel of experts in the cloud industry. Do make use of the live chat to ask questions and let us know where you're tuning in from. Before we begin, let me briefly introduce who we are and what we do. Google Developer Space is a platform for developers and startups from across the region to learn, connect, engage, and be inspired. As part of the developer relations team, we aim to empower and connect the community to our people, programs, network, and technologies, be it in person like a couple of months ago or online like today. Without further ado, I'll hand the stage over to Anne from Coding Ghost to share more about today's session. Over to you, Anne. Thank you so much, Dashing. Um, a warm welcome for everyone for joining us tonight for Code with Cloud Info Session. So today we have amazing speakers in from the cloud industry to share about the cloud career opportunity in cloud industry, how you can get to start, and what's the resource available in cloud communities. So uh, please leave your comments on the YouTube channel. Uh, we will keep eyes on all the questions. So to begin with, let me introduce what is cloud, Code with Cloud program. Code with Cloud program is an eight-week guided, guided learning program. You will be studying with your peers in a group of five uh, under the training of Google Certified Instructor, also with mentors from the cloud industry. At the end of the program, you will be equipped with a technical skills and the knowledge that lead you to take the Google Associate Cloud Engineer certification exam. And we will even give you a cash reward if you pass the exam. And lastly, uh, we will selecting the graduates who will have a chance to have a mock interview session with Google recruiters. So why you should learn cloud? The reason is easy because it's in demand and highly paid. And even if your career goal is not to be a cloud architect, having a knowledge in cloud computing will improve your job perspective. So here is our program schedule. In the first four weeks, you, you need to be studying really hard. It begins with a workshop conducted by Agilitics, our, our training partner, about Google Cloud Fundamentals. And after that, uh, you will be required to take four weeks Coursera course. And our instructor will guide you along the way. You will have a weekly Q&A session, and we will check your progress from time to time. After you've done the four weeks study, we will, we will assign you to a mentor from the industry. Um, where you will learn about the industry practice, and they will also help you to uh, navigate you in preparation for the exam. And we also have the cloud talks and networking session along the way. And once again, if you pass the examination, we will give you cash rewards, and the selected graduates will have a chance to have more interview session with Googlers. So who is this program for? To be honest, this is not for the completely newbie. Um, you should have a basic understanding of tech jargons like networking, database, VM, etc. And you also need to be comfortable in writing the command line. So, and also you have to be fully committed to the eight-week program. So how can you apply? Please go to cloud.codingos.sg and you will find the apply button to fill in the sign up form. After that, you've got two options. You can choose to take our technical quiz or, or choose to complete the intro course on Coursera. This is to help us to understand in your background, make sure you will be a fit for the program. We don't want to waste your time either. And after you've done the task, you will re receive a confirmation from us. So please note the registration will be closed on 20 September. So please visit our website, cloud.codingos.sd for more information. So without further ado, uh, let's work on our next speakers, Shafra. She will be sharing about cloud communities. 
I hand over to you, Chef Ra. All right. Uh, thanks. Thanks, Anne. Uh, thanks for that uh, wonderful introduction about the program. And also, thank you for inviting me uh, to speak and to be a part of this program as well. Um, so um, hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining in uh, for this introductory session. And today we are going to, uh, so my objective is to talk to you about uh, how um, we can enable learning through developer communities. So you are already attending one of those sessions, which is hosted by um, the Coding Girls uh, community. So let me elaborate a little bit more. If you are not a part of a community, why should you should be a part of the community? And what are the benefits that you could get uh, by being a part of a community? Um, uh, so a little bit of introduction about myself. So I'm a part of the developer relations team here um, in uh, Google. And I take care of the uh, cloud communities in South and Southeast Asia. Um, so I'm an engineer by background, and I have a passion for building uh, communities um, as well. Uh, so um, and also a certified uh, professional cloud architect, uh, which gives me a license uh, to talk to you in front uh, and talk to you about uh, the certification as well. So if you want to get in touch with me, if you have anything that you want to get clarified after this discussion, uh, you can put that in the uh, comment section, or you can join. Uh, you can ask me through uh, LinkedIn or Twitter as well. All right. Um, so let me start off the presentation by telling you a story. A story from a community uh, that will be relevant for you. Uh, maybe this person uh, might be you um, as well. So let's um, go into the story. Um, so meet Lai Fong uh, from Malaysia. Uh, so Lai Fong was a a software engineer. Um, she had her J job. She was taking care of different uh, projects or technical projects. And she always had this thought, hey, uh, are there other people that I could engage? Are there people, if, if any, when it comes to, um, um, when I have a question, are there people that I could reach out to? Uh, not only put it out in Stack Overflow, but real actual people who's, who already do have all these questions that I also do have as a software engineer. So while she was uh, going through this whole um, thought process in her mind, she gets an invitation to go uh, to go and attend uh, uh, Cloud Onboard in 2018. Uh, so uh, during Cloud Onboard, she also learns about the Google developer group uh, communities in uh, KL. Uh, so from there onwards, what she uh, would do is she would attend one of the uh, Cloud uh, study jams um where she meet a lot of uh, uh, like-minded people uh, people who had the same uh, kind of the question which she also had um, and also uh, like people who are much more senior to her much more junior to her so she uh, um, was part of the she was getting along with this community and she was learning about uh, google cloud through the study jam process so now she had this question initially, hey, are there people who are like-minded minded just like me um, in my own community, in my own country? So she found that sweet spot. She became a part of this um, study jam. So once she became a part of the study jam, what she also did was she wanted to get hands-on uh, with different technologies, different uh, um, activities around uh, Google Cloud. What she did was she used uh, Quick Labs. Um, so Lifeong took a um, couple of days to complete all these hands-on uh, activities because she wanted um, actually to learn what's um, uh, mainly behind all these technologies. And she was reaching out to her colleagues that um, that she, she met during all the uh, workshops uh, that GDG was hosting uh, for help. And she did know there's someone that she could reach out to as well. Uh, but little did she know the whole um, uh, big, uh, whole idea of becoming a part of becoming part of the community would change her whole career paradigm. Um, so it uh, took her from becoming a software engineer, and she turned this opportunity to learn more of her skills, uh, more of the technologies, and to become uh, an AI engineer. So you also might be in this situation where, hey, I want to make a uh, career uh, change, but hey, how can where can I reach out? Where are those people whom I can get 
uh, an advice from. So obviously it will be one of the communities. Um, so from uh, there onwards, fast forward two years, uh, Lai Fong now is the uh, women tech maker lead at uh, Google Developer Group, Kale. Uh, so this not only enable her, uh, the, 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 the idea of becoming a part of the community did not only make her good in uh, a certain technology, but also brought her um, leadership abilities as well into uh, the limelight, which is a great phenomenal and fantastic uh, achievement for her. So this might be you. Uh, you might be this person who's looking uh, at uh, different uh, uh, like opportunities available out there and then thinking, hey, how can I connect these all these dots? Um, so the best opportunity would be becoming a part of a community where you will find like-minded people. Uh, so let me tell you a little bit about why communities really matter. So we know a story. What exactly does all these things um, boils down to? So mainly three things. Uh, first thing is it enables, communities enable um, collaboration where you meet a lot of people from different uh, um, experience levels, different uh, backgrounds. So you collaborate and the ideas that you exchange will be different. So you um, get an opportunity to learn more from them as well. Uh, by default, all these communities will have a learning objective. They want to share uh, about their learnings and um, Coding Girls is also doing the same thing where they are organizing activities around um, how they can uh, get industry experts to provide learning opportunities. So communities enable learning opportunities. And finally, it enables personal development as well. So when you saw the story of Life on, she started off as a software engineer and then she moved into becoming an AI engineer. And then she became uh, like bringing out her uh, leadership abilities as well into line, like, which is fantastic. So communities can enable collaboration, learning and personal development. Which leads me up to uh, a topic where um, uh, where a lot of communities will be passionate about, which is learning. And Coding Girls is trying to encourage us through this program. And uh, one of the key elements of this program is about the ACE uh, or the Associate Cloud Engineer uh, certification or the examination. Uh, so you might be a part of uh, this program. You might not be a part of this program. So. For the wider benefit, let me share what this examination is about and also a couple of interesting facts about it as well. Uh, all right. So um, about Google Cloud certification, uh, why certification? There are four reasons, mainly which is identified. It's about credibility. It's about the ind uh, industry recognition, career development, and personal development, um, which, uh, which are very self-explanatory. And uh, when it comes to um, Google Cloud certification is one of the highly regarded uh, certificates in the world. And according to independent uh, study have been done, uh, these um, figures have been identified, um, which I think definitely will be useful for you when you are crafting your career and um, when you want to become a part of the program and to become uh, certified as well. All right, so um, when it comes to selecting a certification, uh, there can be like several uh, reasons, several motives, several objectives that you have in your mind. Um, if you are a person who's like technically sound and you want to follow a technical path, um, you can start off by taking associate cloud engineer examination. And if you, want, if you are uh, technically savvy and also you are very keen on um, building solutions, designing different, uh, solutions to different companies, you might consider uh, taking a cloud architect examination. So likewise, there are uh, data engineering examination, cloud developer examination, network and security engineer examinations as well. But the starting point would be um, associate cloud engineer examination. Um, so becoming cloud certified, that's, there's no better time than now because uh, now is the time that, where you can find a lot of time for yourself to learn and to also to empower yourself. Um, commuting time has been cut down. Time uh, spent on uh, like outside activity has been cut down. So which means you can definitely spend that time on your improvement and also taking certification. 
And special um, thing that I want to mention is that associate cloud engineer examination, uh, professional cloud architect examination, and data engineer examinations are now uh, available uh, to, for, for you to take online, uh, which is called as online proctored um, uh, examination. So there are opportunities that you can explore. Um, so there are uh, multiple benefits uh, by uh, being certified. Uh, so you can distinguish, distinguish yourself uh, from rest of the um, uh, professionals where uh, it gives you um, like it gives you access to a network once you become certified it gives you an access to a network of um, certified professionals where you could interact where you can uh, converse more on different areas if you just take um, associate cloud engineer examination you might want to um, like speak with a couple of uh, um, like engineers who have taken uh, professional cloud architect so you can uh, focus towards the uh, next steps of taking examinations as well. But uh, associate cloud engineer can be a very good foundation for you to get started with. Um, so there are a couple of key pointers um, that uh, I think uh, the examination um, uh, will focus on. Um, uh, so criteria and authorized test centers and the examination duration is two hours. Um, it can be uh, multiple choice or multiple select uh, there's no, uh, there's nothing that you will have to write uh, by uh, by yourself. So it's it's a good thing. Um, and then um, depending on the examination that you're taking, it can be technical or business requirement. But um, associate cloud engineer examination going to be focused on um, uh, mainly on technical requirements. Um, and then uh, there are no pen papers allowed as well. But if in case if you're taking online proctored, or maybe if you're taking at a um, center, test center, definitely the uh, whole environment will be according to uh, the test, uh, test center guidelines. So I think those are the things that I want to share with you today um, um, in terms of like the communities and what Coding Girls is trying to do, where you can uh, take the uh, Associate Cloud Engine examination, which leads up to me uh, to a very important point, which is Learning and preparation is the key. Uh, because um, Anne was show, uh, showcasing it to you. Like, you need to be committed to the program. You need to be um, like hands on. Uh, and learning and preparation is the key. No matter where you find the um, resources from, it will be like super useful for you in terms of getting your certification um, passed. Um, like, it's just not going to be like the th theoretical. Um, aspects of the examination, but also you'll be uh, you'll need to you'll have to have um, uh, some level of hands-on experience as well. Uh, so speaking of which, um, it's it's my pleasure to announce you about uh, Modular GCP Season Two as well. Um, so this is a learning opportunity for you. Uh, if you were a part of Modular GCP before, uh, now it's a Season Two. Uh, this time uh, we'll be talking about data analytics and machine learning. So you can get one month free access to uh, Quick Labs, get hands on, um, and then uh, there's this interesting link which I'll uh, pop up now. Um, so you can go to this link, uh, get yourself pre-registered, um, and then uh, you can score some swag as well. Who says no to swag, right? Uh, so that's pretty much it that I want to share with you, and I leave you with a message, uh, final message: um, be a part of a community and let that move be life-changing. And uh, with that note, I would hand back to Anne and Odeo. Um, hi, Ed. I think you're on mute. Oh, so sorry. <laughs> so sorry, I didn't realize I was on mute. So now it's a great 
On our let's welcome our six awesome lady to have this panel discussion. Let's welcome Andrew Sri, who is account executive at Google Cloud. Tina, who is account manager at Google Cloud. We have Fan Ming, who is customer engineer at Google Cloud. We also have Chiu Rong, who is customer engineer at Google Cloud. We have Ashok Ka, who is full stack engineer from Recruiting. Um, last but most important, we have our moderator, Mary Huang, who is Associate Cloud Consultancy from Source Group. I will hand over to Melody. Thank you, Anne. Um, all right, so I'll be your moderator, moderator for today. A little background about myself. Um, I am a cloud consultant currently based in Toronto, Canada. I've been in the industry for a little just over two years and I joined straight out of university as a new grad. Um, so let's start with a round of introductions today for our speakers. So the question is, um, what do you do at work on a daily basis? Maybe give us a little background, um, your position, um, and how did you get in this position and what motivates you? And let's start with Akshara. Okay. Uh, thanks, Melody, and thanks to Coding Girls for organizing this and having us all. So I'm a full stack engineer on the web team uh, at Rakuten Wiki. And Wiki is a video streaming service for Asian content. So I have a lot of drama in my life, K-dramas, basically. And uh, as day-to-day, uh, -day, as part of my day-to-day -day job, uh, I work very closely with the product and the design team to conceptualize and build new features for our users for our web app, which is wiki.com. I also look at some ancillary products of wiki, which is sumpi.com, and our whole infrastructure is based on GCP. So my work also involves in, uh, using GCP tools on a daily basis. And I think in terms of motivation and the best thing about my job is probably the feedback loop cycle because I deploy a feature and it goes out into the world and you start to get reactions immediately from your users about whether they're liking it or not. It's also the feedback from the metrics that you have, the dashboards that we built, and uh, you immediately know whether uh, it's all going right. And that, that excitement, I feel, is uh, the best part of the job. Uh, the way I got here was uh, I joined Wiki two years back as a full stack engineer. And before that, I did research at NUS for three years, completely different topic. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much about me. Melody, back to you. Perfect. Um, let's go to Anushri. Hello, everyone. I'm Anushri, and I'm an account executive with Google Cloud. Really excited to be on this forum and hope you're enjoying this as much as I'm enjoying myself here. So cheers. Um, for like uh, the question, I think um, as my job, what I do every day, I engage with startups and corporate accounts to position like Google Cloud through proposals, references, and industry value centric use cases. Uh, my work also revolves around closely working with customer engineers and Google partners to amplify our cloud business. Now, in short, I, I would just say that owning the business development for uh, my book of business, forecasting accurately uh, to leadership, driving sales, and helping customers through the entire business life cycle is something that I do day in and day out. Um, the best part of the day would be when I have my customer calls. Um, I must say that being able to understand the customer's technology footprint, their challenges, growth plans and uh, how I can help them as a business partner is something that I look forward to every day. Um, I got into Google Cloud like two and a half years back and I must say that I'm so fortunate uh, to work with kind and talented colleagues. I guess it's so motivating to see everyone around me bring the best version of themselves. Um, so I guess it would be the human interactions um, the customer business growth and my extremely talented colleagues who always keep me motivated at work. Back to you, Melody. Sounds awesome. Um, let's go to Min. Hi, everybody. My name is Min. I am a manager for customer engineering at Google Cloud. Uh, so my day-to-day -day activities are quite uh, diverse. So um, we'll be 
some of some day I will be working with customers, working with industry and other sales team, uh, solving customer problems. Sometimes I'll be working with internal teams like partner team, marketing team, uh, working on a awesome webinars. Um, sometimes I will be working with other customer engineers and look at what other awesome team members we can bring in and or sharing some compelling solutions we can repeat with customers. Um, so what really motivates me most, very similar to industry, is really about uh, solving problems, uh, helping customers, and also most importantly, it's really working with a group of awesome people to learn and share and grow together. Back to you, Madeline. Terrific, um, let's go to Hannah. Hello everyone, my name is Hannah. I am a territory account manager as well. Basically, I'm in the same uh, sales team similar to Anushri, and I cover the Southeast Asia and Korea market. I guess the biggest difference is um, Anushri covers some of the bigger and the strategic customers, while I cover more of um, SMB businesses, smaller startups, or you know startups that are starting new. So we are more into volume and velocity. So on a day-to-day -day basis, what do we do? So I talk to customers, either it's new or existing, and my main job is to support them in their journey to Google Cloud or on Google Cloud. So we all, we spend a lot of our time, it's very similar to what Anushri does, right? So we spend a lot of time with our customer engineers, with our partners. We also have a lot of internal meetings to run initiatives and projects based on business needs. So the best thing um, about my job is when customers are happy and they when they reach their goal and we have been or we played a small part, of course, a small part in actually helping them to be very successful in their own um, company. It can be startup, it can be any SMB, it can be any big customer. So if they are successful and we see them really happy with the success that they're taking with Google Cloud, I think that is when I feel the most happy in this job that I do. Back to you. Awesome. Um, and last but not least, let's go to QR. Thank you, everyone. And good to see some colleagues on this call as well. Um, hi, my name is Chiu Rong. You can call me QR for short. Uh, I'm in Google for about four years, and right now I'm a customer engineer working with SMB. So I work with Hannah on a day-to-day -day basis and with customers, of course. Um, and uh, we, we as customer engineers, we work closely with sales and account executives to work with customers to choose the best solutions on GCP. And the, the choosing can be a very long process in terms of discussing about the architecture, understanding customers' priorities, and also their teams, their team skill sets, and also involved with whiteboarding and uh, proof of concept testing, and also to help them to be fully migrated or deployed onto Google Cloud. I guess similar with a lot of our um, client-facing team folks, the best comes from how customers' success is our success and how we actually help and add value to the customers when they are coming to Google Cloud Platform. And I personally also enjoy the job very much. That's because we engage with a lot of startups, technology companies. I actually learned a lot from them of how their business goes and transform into technology solutions and how they actually implement different building blocks of Google Cloud and cloud technology to achieve their goals, which was really, really fascinating. And I guess that's it. Um, over back to you, Melody. Awesome. So amazing to see such a big group of talented women supporting each other. Um, and let's get into the questions. So uh, QR, can you explain what cloud computing is in simple terms? I've been thinking about the analogy. Um, probably the best analogy will be cloud. Think about electricity and water supply are your household. And cloud is similar. And back to 50 or 100 years ago, we don't have utility company who supply um, electricity. So it's probably each of the factories, they will have their own generators, they will produce their own electricity. And this is usually over capacity because they don't know what exactly amount they will use. And maybe for factories, they will use more during the day and the opposite for household, which creates a lot of waste of resources. And thinking about cloud will be similar that instead of each individual company buy their own server hardwares, have their own wiring network setups, you can purchase or you can actually get the pool of resources from the cloud and you can pay for on-demand and use on-demand and return it 
like when you are when it's not being used. And this is right now what is happening, and this is going to be the future, like how electricity and water supply is so common to our lives that we don't even realize it. And many of these applications on the cloud that Google is running fully on cloud, Gmail, and all these uh, all these popular apps that we rely on our life when they are working from home and stay at home is actually built on cloud. So this is really, really exciting for us all, and I'm really, you know, excited to have you all to, you know, have your first step onto Google Cloud and with Cloud Journey. And everybody else, please feel free to chime in if you have more the best comments and analogies that you want to share. Awesome, what a cute analogy. Um, and let's go to Min. Uh, so you have been in the tech industry for more than 10 years. How has cloud technology changed in the past five years? And in your opinion, what are some upcoming areas of growth for cloud? Good questions. So in the past five years, uh, there are a few trends. Uh, one thing is that you see a lot of um, born in the cloud um, startups rising really quickly. All those um, you know, uh, unicorns almost literally you know, became so big overnight. And also you see a huge explosion of SaaS. Um, we know that Google Cloud has nine apps have over 1 billion users. Um, so, so all that, you may ask, how come this is just like a balloon expanding so quickly? Um, so so um, as QR said, this is really in the pay as, you, pay as you use, a lot of things that empower that innovation. Um, probably I'll go into a little bit uh, technical. So one thing that's really important is really about the use of container become the norm. So that really enable, empower de developers to focus on writing the code once then deploy and run there anywhere and any anywhere. So so back in my old days, uh, you know, you spend a lot of time to to prepare the environments, you know, the, the develop environment, you know, SIT pre-production, then, then performance testing. So you have you spend half your time pre preparing the environment. So I really think the container really solve 90% of the headache of the developers. Um, so the second one I want to also mention is that uh, also we have seen huge uh, cloud adoption in the traditional enterprise space. It's no longer just the digital natives uh, enjoying the, the cloud. So in terms of security, uh, one thing I really want to uh, emphasize highlight is really the private uh, cloud, um, you know, how, how, how all the cloud providers were able to carve out a piece of public cloud to, to allow the enterprise to, to have that, you know, extension to their on-premise environment, which is really critical because that is really helping a lot of enterprises to remove the roadblocks to, to enjoy all these innovations, but they still have the legacy things on-premise, they still have to, to leverage. So in terms of what's happening uh, in the next few years, um, so given the uh, global pandemic, I, I really see, we're really seeing the acceleration of cloud adoption. So um, a few things I would also like to highlight. highlight. Um, so, so data, it is so key. It's more important than ever to, to have the ability to make decisions in real time or in near real time. And also QR mentioned, up, QR mentioned about pay as you pay as you use. We actually seeing uh, Google actually use uh, machine learning as a service to our customers to enable that ability to, to make decisions fast. Uh, the second one is really about um, um, cost may not be sexy, but now cash flow is so key. So we haven't seen a lot of cost uh, driven initiatives looking at cloud. Um, and uh, the third one is really about multi-cloud, hybrid cloud conversation. Um, so many customers, both digital natives and enterprise customers, they want to have multi-cloud strategy. One is to op keep it open, flexible. Two is to keep the uh, you know cost check in check. For enterprise customers, this is even more important. It's really not about you know uh, which public cloud provider is the best. It's really about which one or which ones can you know fit to solve the problems at hand. So that that will probably summarize what I I could share. It can be a question we can talk all day and all night. But back to you, Melanie. <laughs> so thank you for your insight, Min. Um, as a follow up to that, um, for someone entering the industry in the cloud space, uh, what is the typical background of a cloud engineer or a cloud associate? Um, so if there is no typical background, what are some skill sets you think they share? So, so I wouldn't uh, call out a particular background or 
um, educational certification that we're looking for. Uh, you know, statistically speaking, uh, uh, stud students or engineers coming from the STEM background uh, seems to be the most common um, engineers we have seen in our teams. But I haven't seen other others who have zero you know, background, maybe a history major, uh, but who is really passionate about technology, passionate about solving problem, uh, actually do really well in cloud. So I, I guess my, my, my key, um, you know, thing for, for every day on the call is really about, you know, what is really you want to do, uh, what you're curious. It's really about curiosity and also the drive to solve problem. Uh, so that will actually drive you to where you need to be. Cloud is really not really that mysterious. It's really just a, an area you want to learn. You need to have the passion and the interest to look, continue to learn. So that's the key uh, we're looking for. Really about you know passion, hunger to learn, passion and drive to solve problems continuously. Thank you, Min. Um, definitely agree. Passion is sometimes half the battle. So that being said, uh, Hannah, what are the different roles available in cloud computing? And what are some uh, traits or competencies that you tend to look out for for potential candidates to join your team? Yeah, so um, I we, we didn't have a time to discuss this with Min, so I hope I'm not repeating <laughs> myself because whatever she said covered almost like the most crucial thing, right? But yeah, any role, I guess, that you would expect in any normal company, you would find it in cloud computing as well. Like say it, sales, marketing, programs, engineering, like technical roles, accounting, HR, talent acquisitions, operations. So everything, you find something similar, right? But it comes with just a little twist in the domain knowledge or even understanding of the cloud industry. So that is something that is important. And of course, there are some roles that are more specific to cloud computing kind of industry. Some of these includes things like go-to-market strategy teams for cloud, startup teams that is there to actually support and help and build the startup ecosystem, um, ecosystem managers, and also things like business development team, product team that's, that's handling specific product or solutions such as um, IoT, data analytics, machine learning, industry team that is very focused on certain industries such as retail, healthcare, um, maybe even strategic deals team that work on huge deals and bidding teams that work on a lot of tenders. So there are some things that are very, very focused and there's so much different types of roles that are open for everybody. And so because the role and the availability is so diverse. You can come from any background and still join the cloud team. Like for me, I come from economics. Um, so it's, it's, it, you don't actually have to come from, it's exactly what Min said, right? And in terms of traits and competencies, it's definitely somebody with curiosity, willingness to learn and grow, I think is the most important. And I really feel that it has to be somebody who really enjoy the fast paced environment would be a good candidate because this is a really fast paced environment. You have to constantly be learning every night something new comes up. Um, for me, I'm lucky I'm in the sales team. I need to be less on my feet, but I'm sure wrong and probably the customer engineers, they really have, or even, you know, the engineers, they really have to be on the feet because every day something new is being released and that you have to know that, right? Because tomorrow the customer can ask about it. So definitely somebody who has like deep curiosity and somebody who can enjoy this because I truly believe that if you enjoy it, you'll go as far as you, you, somebody who like puts in so much effort, right? So yeah, curiosity, willingness to learn and grow and somebody who en enjoy this fast paced environment. Anybody else um, want to chip in or <laughs> back to um, help? Hey, thank you, Hannah. That's a perfect answer. I definitely agree with that. So on the topic of the different roles that you just highlighted, um, as a personal perspective to NS3, um, from engineering to sales, what is the main difference between the two roles based on your experience? Wow, lovely question. And uh, that's a question which is very close to my heart. So here it goes. I would like to kind of um, take you back to the days when I just did my electrical engineering and uh, I was uh, thrown uh, as a software engineer in Infosys. Uh, very quickly, I actually realized that, well, I was not terrific at it. I was not terrific at engineering and I was not terrific at coding. So um, a couple of years it took me, but I thought, okay, uh, I think it's a good time to kind of retrospectively see what I'm good at. And uh, I realized that actually I was good at requirements gathering. I was good at technical documentation. I was good at project management. I was good at taking customer calls. So I thought, why not kind of do an MBA? 
and uh, i guess it was one of the best decisions that i have uh, i mean made in my life because it opened a wide array of opportunities for me i ended up working in roles um with product marketing media agency lead and a quantitative market researcher before i landed up in sales so i firmly believe that doing different roles actually equips you with different perspectives and makes you a very well rounded individual with holistic view of the business now for example um if product in product marketing it was a very new experience to me to kind of help launch products see them grow and build a brand like being a marketing professional makes you realize how crucial it is to have brand ethos so i would say from being an engineer uh, to chasing targets now and marketing in between it has made me a very collaborative person understanding challenges and limitations of every role which in turn has made me very empathetic um so i guess like being open to uh, different kind of roles different exposure uh, be it sales be it marketing be it like product mar- uh, market researcher everything has contributed to where i have landed today and it definitely helps in sales where you kind of talk to business units uh, which can be as varied as ecosystem managers or their program managers or their product managers so i guess um it i think you can do it all if you have the experience that on the job training is best um i have enjoyed it every bit of it so please um, uh i am open to kind of answer many questions in different kind of fields and i would say that this is as important as all the different people who are contributing in different roles awesome thank you thank you, <laughs> thank you for your input i uh, definitely agree in the computer science ecosystem there's so many different alleys you could go down and it is um contributes a lot of value to the different teams um that being said let's go to ashara so as someone who transitioned into cloud uh, from a non computer stack in platform uh do you mind sharing more about your journey uh what are some skill sets or competencies that do you think engineers can build up for cloud computing uh yep so i i did transition into computer science as a whole from a different field which was architecture uh, for buildings not systems and uh i uh, i spent 5 years doing that and i think my introduction to computer science was more out of laziness because the way i discovered it was uh, i was doing this internship in my second year and they gave me a very intern like task which was really boring and i knew a little bit of scripting initially i knew that there was an api for the software available and i had to gather something so that i could spend more time eating their free food rather than doing the boring tasks that they'd given me but i uh, sort of stumbled into this mid middle ground called computational architecture like that and it was addictive to me to be honest so uh, because you know the knowledge is so accessible these days i taught myself how to code using free code camp your coursera udacity any of these free resources that i could get my hands on and then i uh, came to nus to do research uh, in computational architect- architecture building a programming tool for designers and then finally two years back i sort of decided i don't want to restrict myself to that domain anymore and i moved into professional software development so it's been quite a journey and uh, in terms of skill sets i think uh, well obviously if you're moving into cloud uh, basic skill sets matter right like you should know how to program and your fundamentals about system design networking storage security all those things are useful uh, getting familiar with containerization technologies like docker kubernetes like min mentioned are obviously critical but i think uh, more more critical are is your ability to conceptualize solutions design it and your familiarity with these tools to be able to demo and uh, communicate that quickly to your team it's also uh, quite beneficial to have like an analytical dashboard mindset so that you can track 
what you are deploying, your services, you take ownership for the, that. And uh, most importantly, I think for the field as a whole, not just cloud, uh, like uh, Hannah mentioned, I'm repeating her completely word for word, is how learning how to learn quickly, because this field is growing so rapidly that if you keep yourself updated about all the different product offerings you have, uh, if you know which piece goes where, that definitely gives you an edge in a field like that. Yeah, yeah. back to you, Melody. Hi, right. thank you, Ashada. Um, what I always find so interesting about this field is cloud computing is a new emerging field. So there's so many um, stories similar to yours that you just shared, how people went through different industries and how they ended up here and finding something they're really passionate about, something really inspiring about that. Um, and on that note, let's go to QR. And can you highlight some of uh, um, how has the certifications uh, helped with your skills and development and career advancement in the cloud computing field? Yeah, sure. Thank you. Thank you, Melody. And thank you all for your very inspiring sharing. I guess I know a bit more about every one of you. Um, I, I think uh, it, was, it was a great question and uh, uh, probably just an example for uh, having the cloud certification to make the career transition. And I just mentored five university students over the summer for them to get to the associate cloud engineer certificate as well. Um, so, so it seems from my manager always says like the cert and the scars, you get a cert and now it's the time to get into real life with the scars. And for me, I, I, w I had an electrical engineering degree and I tried software engineering, I didn't like it. And I started as a sales role in Google cloud and I was probably as, just as more technical sales in our team. And at that time, I guess nobody knows about it. Maybe my customers know about it. And my, co my, my customer engineer at that time knows about it, but nobody else knows about it. And for me, I kind of get ex experience and I wanted to know more, like what Hannah and um, Akshata mentioned about having the curiosity and the passion to learn more. So I kind of took the um, Christmas and New Year holiday. It's very quiet. Uh, they took to that time to self-study and to get the cloud, cloud architect certificate two years ago. And it, this is like you get the scars, now you get a cert to prove that you actually know about it with a, with a score on it, right? And at that time, I guess um, it was very well received by the team. And it also opens up the opportunity for me to make a transition into customer engineers. And I always, to be honest, always liked customer engineers. They were best friends. For sales, and I wanted to become a customer engineer, and um, and I guess giving that with opportunity and a great manager and team allow me to grow within that space and also kind of get more certs and scars in that space. So it's really about like everybody talking about it's a really fast pace, and which also means a lot of opportunities will evolve. And just there's no better time to learn now and to get those certificates. So uh, also similarly for the students I mentored over the Google Cloud Student Spring program, I guess they also enjoy the journey, um, hopefully. And <laughs> and also with um, and, uh, while studying towards the certificate, also help them to know more about the cloud industries and their interests and probably where they would like to develop into the career. That's all for me. And also, Hannah was a uh, certified cloud architect as well. So it doesn't necessarily mean that you need to become a, you know, you have a, you need to become a customer engineer or other more technical roles. You can also become a more technical sales in your own role and excel from that. Yeah, I was mentored by um, Hurong's peer <laughs> to get the cloud uh, certificate, a professional certificate as well. Um, <laughs> if I can get it, like any of anybody can get it. I was in the pilot program <laughs> to so, get the thanks, girls. Um, definitely agree. Uh, certificates just open up more alleys of opportunities. It does not limit you um, to just technical or just architecture wise. Um, it kind of gives you a sense of what to expect when you enter the industry. Um, and can only bring good. So uh, on that note, uh, let's go to Min. Um, so the question is, what are some resources and initiatives uh, available to support female engineers in the field? 
Uh, so, so there are a lot of, um, so in the field, there are many um, known initiatives that are in Singapore I'm aware of. I'm aware of. There's Lean In, and I'll just spend some time talk about what Google is offering. Besides all this, uh, you know, we have the coding. Besides coding girls and uh, developer community. So, so one thing I need to mention is that there's something uh, called I'm Remarkable Initiative. Um, so, so this is really to help uh, women and underrepresented groups to 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 help them to to do self promotion to 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 feel okay to you know uh, talk about their accomplishments and they don't need to downplay downplay their achievement because it's very important in Asia I think the, the modesty it, it is a a, a social norm uh, especially for women it seems to be we need to be humble uh, when when people give you praises and you say oh don't mention it so that's not the the way to go go so basically this is a google way google a uh, global initiative to to help uh, women and other groups to to promote self promote and also to build presence and the second one particularly in google cloud we actually have a group called women in cloud there are multiple uh, initiatives that we're driving their toastmaster activities we also uh, organized a leadership uh, talks which are open up to external audience as well it's also uh, running on on youtube live um, so if you guys are interested we can also include you guys in there that's really providing um typically we'll get uh, industry leaders uh not just from google also from other industries to talk about their personal journeys and do q a so those two i think will be really um useful for for the for the audience here yeah. Um, it's always really inspiring to see uh, industry leaders like Google investing heavily into uh, driving diversity in the field. Um, always happy to see familiar female faces on the team. And I definitely think our generation is the one that can really push that forward um, <clears throat> to really bring equality in the tech industry. Uh, and on that note, let's go to Akshada. And the question is, what is your advice on how women can succeed in the workplace for cloud engineering? Uh, again, I think the most important thing would be to keep yourself updated. I think getting the certification is a great way to do that because it sort of gives you a, a broad picture. It forces you to basically touch the whole stack that's there. And uh, apart from that, I think another core thing is to get your best practices right, uh, interact more with the community, read the documentation, read the different case studies, and uh, build like. You build it first, then you do it right, and then you build it better, right? And another another thing would be to take ownership. I mean, that stands true for any role, but uh, especially for this, since you're architecting the whole thing, uh, if, if you take ownership of the thing that you're building, that makes you stand out, I feel. Back to you, Melody. Of course. Thank you for your answer. Um, so I'd like to thank all the beautiful females and talented uh, women that contributed today. And this will be our last question on the panel. So in closing, um, I'm going to ask Anishi, uh, what are some advice that you have to someone new that's joining the cloud industry or advice on how they can start, get started, and break into the industry? Um, I think uh, out there, like the cloud adoption is mainstream now, and it's a booming industry. So there is like a lot of roles open in uh, cloud. We, uh, Haina kind of mentioned uh, very briefly, but I should my kind of highlight that there are like sales roles, engineering roles, operations roles, strategy roles, program manager roles, ecosystem growth partner roles. So you name it and you will find it. Um, in cloud, there are roles kind of opening up. So I guess like finding your passion and exploring how kind of your exp experience complements it uh, will be very important for starters. And it's very important to kind of uh, spend your time learning, uh, learning the concepts that can help you build your foundation. Get your basics right, be it like any role, just get the basic concepts right. And then, of course, you can uh, find and navigate your way into your roles. You will just grow into the role. 
So for me, I would just suggest that grab any opportunity that comes your way with both hands. Um, on the job training is the best. Try to find some internships which give you exposure to different roles. Um, network within the industry. Also, I would say uh, find mentors. This is a concept that I was like uh, very recently exposed with, and I think I have found mentors who really help me along the way. Um, so I guess uh, networking, finding mentors, on-the-job training is something that you should do to grow in this industry and not be in cloud in any industry per se. And uh, also never shy away to ask for help. Always ask because that is the first step of like, in getting something. So, and yeah, conquer the cloud industry fearlessly. The world is yours. <laughs> Thank you, Anishi. Um, I would like to share a piece of advice that I always uh, carry with me. I heard at a conference that was celebrating women in technology, similar to what you mentioned about um, always finding a mentor is very helpful and beneficial in the industry. Um, this piece of advice said to always find your lighthouse that will guide you in times where you feel lost. So a lighthouse is um, someone that could give you an encouraging nod. Say if you're presenting in a room and you're starting to get a little nervous, um, there's always someone that you know if you look to that can ground you and maybe they do a reassuring nod. Um, and that, that little bit of encouragement is able to help you push through that fear and achieve greatness. Um, so that was always something that I carry through. Whenever I enter a room, I always find someone that I can make a connection with that I know if I start panicking, they will definitely ground me and help me through the hardest of times. Um, and with that, that concludes all of our questions for today. And let's open it up to some Q and A's. And you're on mute. Hi, Melody. I got a question from Andrew. She is a cybersecurity student and she is interested in like cloud security topics, like what what is the industry practice? How like uh, especially for the public cloud side, how to ensure the security? Um. Okay, I can take this one uh, in terms of the security. So cloud security, it is absolutely critical. Oh, critical for, for cloud adoption, uh, regardless if you're digital native or enterprise customers. Um, so so um, it's not really one size fit all. I think uh, when you study cybersecurity, it's the first thing you will say, okay, what are your crypto assets you want to protect? And what's your attack surface? And what's your policy? The same apply to cloud. So the, the, probably the, the difference is really about the key is to understand which part of the your assets are being because of cloud migration being transferred over over to the pub cloud providers which ones are retained to your to your customer or your own company's uh, domain so that's basically the the new new thing when you consider cloud so in short maybe to to oversimplify by moving the, to the cloud you basically will reduce some of the uh, cyber security uh, you know responsibilities because you're basically outsource that to the cloud providers. And, but this is absolutely important topic. Um, and we actually do have a, you know, in terms of certification, we actually have cloud security <laughs> certification. And in terms of, um, in, in my, uh, in our uh, custom engineering community, we actually have security specialist uh, for this particular uh, area. Yeah. Absolutely bright future. <laughs> Yeah, so yeah. to add on to what Ben mentioned, so I actually work for a company that specializes in uh, highly regulated workloads across different enterprises. So our focus of the entire industry is just building um, secure cloud foundational platforms so that uh, it can, it's scalable for clients to use in the future and they don't have to worry about security. Um, yeah, so it's definitely a really interesting field to get into. There's really high in demand. Uh, High, cloud computing has opened up a whole new set of regulations is what we've been seeing. So um, there's things like NIST, the cybersecurity framework, there's actually one targeted for cloud computing. So that's definitely a really good area to get into. Um, super, a lot of resources online that you can look into there.
So we have another question from Cassel. Uh, this question is about how the COVID-19 has been affect cloud computing jobs now. I think I can have a go at this one. Um, so, hey, uh, hi, I mean, thanks for the question. I don't think so. It would be kind of appropriate to um, comment largely on how COVID has affected all the com cloud computing jobs. So I, I would just say that there is this economic freeze that has been induced by the pandemic. And um, fortunately, unfortunately, we do not see, uh, we are in doldrums and I, I think that we will recover, but when is the question? So um, I guess um, all the companies like around the world, they are just being cautious and uh, maybe there is a hiring freeze at some point for some other companies uh, they are rethinking their strategy when it comes to kind of having business units or like if the employees are needed or not in particular jobs. So it has affected, I think, the jobs per se. But to what extent is something can be only determined um, after this blows over? Um, I guess we should all take this time to kind of reevaluate our strategy on how we kind of want to foray into different jobs or how I can explore a passion and make the best out of it. Um, no company is immune to COVID and uh, it, it did have like a, and it does have like an economic impact. Um, but I guess we should all use this time to kind of um, make the best use of it, learn and hone our skills and build some new ones mm -hmm. like uh, when this is all over. Yeah, mm -hmm. thanks. So Melody, maybe may I probably add a few uh, my observations. So, so COVID nineteen impact. To maybe just look at a macro level. Um, say I'm, I'm sure many of you are thinking about jobs later on when you're graduating. So from macro level, there are industries are definitely be in, impacted pr primarily travel for sure. But there are other industries actually are, have a positive impact. For example streaming people are watching a lot of k k drama for some reason there, there are gaming companies a lot there are a lot of people playing games e-commerce and and so there are industries actually may have um, a, a demand because of the um, consumption you know drive huge consumption of the digital things so 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 um you know there's something that you could think of in terms of when you searching for jobs, which particular industry you're interested in. And also um, maybe in, in the next six to 12 months, you will see, you know, uh, expansion. That might be something you could consider as well. Okay. Back to you, Melody. Yeah, I think let's have one last question. This question is from Eva. Um, I think this question will be specific for customer engineer uh, she wants to know an, an example of how um, you helped a startup or sme to migrate onto google cloud and what are the benefits they're getting from um i, I guess it's not um limited to customer engineers, but also to the fellow sales teams as we work so closely together to work to, to help the startups, small, medium business or larger businesses to migrate onto Google Cloud. And the migration can happen from their own infrastructure, for example, on-prem environments or from other clouds onto Google Cloud. And I, from my, my side, I've seen of the the few value adding for Google Cloud for them to migrate on. First is that we have been kind of stressing on the um, the benefits of having an on demand service versus a um, like a capex invest investment at for a lot of on prem environment that will be involving a lot of the investment into the data center, into the server racks, into maintenance people who are dedicated to it instead of you kind of have a cloud console to use it all from remote office as well. 
So this is one major benefit we are seeing from customers moving from cloud. And that was, to be honest, the initial benefit, the initial value. And moving along, like Ming has been mentioned, that we're not having, only have infrastructure as services. We're having machine learning as services, and we're having data services that is, is uh, act as the act as a package service, but it's kind of serverless, which kind of include, and also the container container technology is having more benefits of cloud versus a server to server migrations. And um, maybe maybe my fellow colleagues can also comment, especially in terms of how they have been seeing customers modifying their or modernizing their applications from server onto services that's kind of free and being able to not to not manage servers and to have the benefits of you know on demand and also is more um you know from from uh, on ago so um this is just two quick points i come up with and i guess everybody is free to chime in and also share their experiences yeah, let me just add a bit onto that as well. Um, since it was more on SMEs, we work a lot with SMEs. I guess we uh, and I think above there was a question with regards to like is 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 the strong is the demand still there, right? For cloud computing for Singapore, how's the landscape? Is there a strong demand from companies? Um I think Min was spot on right just now. A lot of companies are also, um, I know she also said the same thing. When customer thinks about, um, or when companies think, uh, we think again about their strategy and with COVID and all, all these kind of things that are happening, they are hugely thinking and pressurized by moving into digital kind of environment as well now. And for them to move into digital um, kind of steps, there are two big things that customers or SMEs have to look at startups or SMEs have to look at first is the cost side, which is in terms of what is the cost for them. Um, I think a great point that was taken out earlier in the beginning was pay as you go, right? Are you going to pay a KPEX or will it, will it be an OPEX kind of question into are they are you going to pay bit by bit or are you going to pay everything at lump sum given that you only have this much amount of capital at a certain amount of time, especially for SMEs and probably startups. So that is one thing that you um, we have helped, helped, and that is one thing in which customers, I would say, companies benefit from cloud or Google Cloud. And I think the next portion is the innovation part, right? A lot of the startups, a lot of the big companies have the power, have the capability to innovate in terms of doing things like even simple things like product recommendation. You want to build an app. You have a small um, bakery. How do you want to make this digital? And how do you want to make sure that the customers are happy or satisfied with their service as well? And to do that, cloud is offering like a a cheaper way to innovate and try out and fail and try out again. And something that is very important for SMEs to actually grow and even, you know, like compete with any of the big companies out there, any of the startups coming there. So I think that is the part where we try to help a lot with the customer. So two, two main areas, on the cost side, one is the ability to try out and innovate and experiment on cloud. I think that is the two biggest reasons to why customer has or like want to come to cloud. To do this, there are a lot of government that is subsidizing as well. One of the program that we have is this IMDA is funding this, like Singapore government is funding like SM, SMEs to move into cloud native environment and to actually make sure that their small and medium businesses stay competitive with the current nature that there is. And I think that that is very in line to what we are doing now as well and how coding girls are doing it, right? We want to make sure the workforce is co competitive enough to stay up with the industry. And especially with COVID, I think this has like pushed more because everything is becoming more digital. And again, for companies, they have to stay competitive with the market. So yeah, that those are the two points I wanted to summarize, not add. <laughs> Back to you and um, Mel. Yeah, I think there's another quite interesting question. Uh, maybe we'll add one more. So the question is about uh, if they take the certification to GCP, where those skills and knowledge will be portable to other cloud providers. Uh, maybe I can I can take that. Uh, because I have worked with AWS also, uh, and I did get my certification recently. So in, in terms of a one-to-one -one, uh, direct translation of the knowledge that you get, maybe not. 
But in terms of the fundamentals, right, like the different pieces that are going together, then yes. So if it in terms of an overview of the cloud landscape, then I would say yes, the knowledge is portable. But uh, yeah, obviously with 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 the class. Yeah, I agree on that too because I use both AWS and the GCP. So um, I think the fundamental will be quite similar. The difference may be like the services that you provide. But if you like, you can just choose one and focus on like learning about those things like process and what would be like the scenario will help you to understand like uh, the fundamental cloud computing. Yeah, that's my <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah, I think uh, just just to add on, uh, I think one of the great things about the certification is it approaches uh, the questions are very business related in a way. Like you have to, there'll be multiple choices that uh, uh, are all right answers, but for your particular scenario, it's it one is more correct than the other, and uh, I think that way of thinking also maps over even if you're choosing a different cloud provider right i guess job wise we also have a lot of colleagues who joined us with different certs from other clouds and like i said cert and the scars right it kind of shows you have the fundamental knowledge regardless of which cloud providers and now getting into the job is to get the scars then to get the work done right Yeah, cool. So thank you everyone for this very fruitful discussion and sharing about your insights about cloud computing. And um, it's my honor to have you all here. And the last I want to address that for all, <laughs> for all the audience that please remember to check on our website at cloud codingos.sg for more information about the program. So thank you everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.